This video was designed to assist you in setting up your new Boss sewing machine, helping you to become familiar with all its components so you can be sewing a nice stitch with the least amount of complications. Thanks once again for purchasing the Tipman Boss and we hope you enjoy it. By watching this video, you may find it helpful to have your manual handy and follow along as we go through the machine. We also recommend reading through the manual before changing needles and bobbins, threading needles, or before disassembly or moving the machine. One thing we would like to stress before operating this machine is to have it securely fastened to a workbench. Refer to page 4 of the manual for setup instructions. The Boss was designed for the leather craftsperson and we hope it becomes your favorite tool in your leather shop. This rugged machine is simple and easy to use. With the slightest pull of the handle, this fully adjustable leather sewing machine creates perfect lock stitches every time for a fraction of the cost of conventional leather sewing machines. Let's look at everything that comes with the Boss. Included are two bobbins, one in the shuttle in the front of the machine used while testing and adjusting the machine in the factory. The other is in your accessory box. Next is a sample spool of thread, an accessory box that includes an assortment of 10 needles, a standard presser foot, a set of Allen wrenches, and a bobbin winder. Next is a package with the parts to assemble the thread stand, Boss Operator's Manual, and finally, the Tipman Boss Hand Stitcher Sewing Machine. There are a number of different attachments and accessories that can be used to assist you with your sewing needs. These different presser feet are used to stitch in places the standard presser foot will not go and other special applications. The flat bed is used for soft material and some flat material. One of the most common attachments is the retractable material guide used to guide your stitch evenly along the edge of your project. Throughout this demonstration, please follow along in the manual. We will be referring to sections in the manual that have helpful illustrations. Open your manual to page 5. Looking at the boss, Starting at the top is the stitching handle with presser foot lifting handle, thread guide B, thread guide C, the secondary tensioner and primary tensioner, thread guide F, the presser foot cable, the needle thread take up arm, the presser foot tension adjuster dial, the needle bar, thread guide H, thread guide I, the presser foot, the stitch length adjuster dial, the needle foot, the needle plate, the bobbin shuttle with bobbin inside, and finally the mounting holes. Once your machine is out of the box, you are ready to mount the machine to a workbench or stand. Turn to page 4 in the manual. Secure the boss to a Tipman stand using three 3 8 inch bolts supplied with the stand. If you are mounting the machine to an existing workbench, use three 3 8 inch bolts or lag screws of suitable length. It is very important that the boss be securely anchored to a bench or work area to prevent damage to the machine or injury to the operator. Now attach the handle to the boss. Locate the attachment point on the boss, slide the stitching handle onto the shaft, and line up the small hole on the stitching handle with the threaded one in the needle shaft gear. Bolt the stitching handle firmly to the gear using the Allen wrench supplied in the accessory box. Attaching the thread stand is next. Insert the screw through the thread guide, stand base, and into the boss at the mounting point. Then attach the thread post to the center of the thread stand base with a nut. Tighten with the thread guide positioned so that it allows the thread to feed into the thread guide B. Now it's time to test the boss. 
Caution, always keep your hands clear of the presser foot and needle operation, including during the testing phase. First, let's check the presser foot lift. Cycle the presser foot by squeezing the presser foot lift handle to the stitching handle. The presser foot should lift approximately one inch. Always be sure the presser foot path is clear of hands, tools, or other obstacles. If the presser foot doesn't lift, review your attaching of the handle to the machine. The second and final test is to check the stitching handle. Once again, make sure the machine is securely attached to a tipman stand or workbench. Remove the needle if present and keep your hands or other obstacles away from the needle path. Cycle the needle foot down and up by gripping and pulling the stitching handle completely down and returning completely to the upright position. Watch to be sure the needle foot cycles down and up. Now refer to page six in the manual. To install the needle, cycle the needle bar to the raised position. Loosen the needle set screw with the Allen wrench provided in your kit. This will allow the needle to be inserted into the needle bar hole. Select the proper needle from your assortment. Insert the needle shank first fully into the needle bar hole with the scarf spot facing the needle set screw. Once the needle is in place and the scarf spot pointing toward the set screw, tighten the set screw firmly with the Allen wrench. Refer to page six in your manual for additional information on the scarf location. Now turn to page seven. Release the bobbin from within the bobbin shuttle. Locate the bobbin shuttle at the end of the cylinder bed. Press the shuttle release latch to release the bobbin cylinder. Remove the empty bobbin spool. To wind your bobbin, place the end of your bobbin string in the slot on your bobbin winder. The bobbin winder is designed so that it fits on any power drill. Slide your bobbin on the shaft. The bobbin shaft is located in your accessory box. Hold the string over the edge of the bobbin and begin winding. Try to keep the thread in even layers of thread on your bobbin. When winding the bobbin with thread, do not fill the bobbin so full that it has to be forced into the bobbin shuttle. Once the bobbin is properly wound, insert the wound bobbin with six to eight inches of slack thread. Be sure to insert the bobbin so that the thread comes off the bobbin in a counterclockwise fashion. Hold the bobbin in place so it won't turn. Pull the slack thread down the tension spring slit here until the thread reaches the slot in the shuttle. Secure the shuttle by snapping the bobbin cylinder back into place. There should be six to eight inches of slack thread hanging out of the bobbin shuttle at the end of the cylinder bed. At this point, let's start threading the machine. Refer to page eight in your manual. First, select the proper thread and place it on the thread stand. Loop the thread through thread guide A, then pass the thread through the top and then bottom holes in the thread guide B. When using heavy threads, 346 or larger, only use the bottom hole on the thread guide B. Weave the thread along the front of the guidepost C and then pass the thread through the backside of the secondary tensioner, D. Pull the thread between the two discs up to the post. Then loop the thread once clockwise around the primary tensioner wheel, E. Now pull the thread through the F guidepost and through the thread take-up arm, G. Watch the primary tensioner wheel as you are pulling the thread through the F guidepost. 
it should rotate clockwise as the thread is being drawn through it. Continue threading the machine through the H thread guide, then down the edge of the machine to the I thread guide. Now let's thread the needle. Make sure the needle and presser foot areas are clear. Cycle the needle bar to the raised position. Pass the thread down through the needle foot, then through the needle from left to right. Draw approximately 10 inches of thread through the eyelet of the needle. This will be used to prepare the needle and bobbin for sewing. Now you are ready to draw the bobbin thread up through the needle plate. To complete this, hold on to the end of the needle thread away from the needle. Now carefully cycle the needle bar one time, holding on to the needle thread. This action loops the bobbin and needle threads together inside the cylinder bed. Now pull the needle thread, and the bobbin thread will come up with it through the hole in the needle plate. Align the needle thread and bobbin thread through the presser foot toes away from the operator toward the back of the cylinder. You are now ready to insert your material and begin sewing. You will need to hold the needle and bobbin thread ends for the first couple of stitches. Now let's start to sew on some scrap material and we will cover the typical adjustments that will need to be made. Let's adjust the presser foot first. A properly adjusted presser foot will advance the material without slipping and leaving a presser foot imprint on the material. Use a scrap of material, identical in thickness and material, that you'll be sewing later. Insert the sample material under the presser foot and sew a couple of stitches observing the material for slipping and not advancing by the presser foot on every stitch. If the material slips or doesn't advance, the presser foot pressure needs to be increased. To do this, cycle the machine and turn the presser foot adjuster dial clockwise until the material is advanced by the presser foot without slipping. Observe the test material again for presser foot impressions. If they appear on the material, Decrease the presser foot pressure by turning the presser foot adjuster dial in a counterclockwise direction. Retest until the presser foot pressure feeds the material and doesn't leave an impression. There are other steps that can be taken to lessen the impression left on the material by the presser feet and needle plate. If this problem persists, please feel free to contact the factory for more help. Now let's adjust the stitch length. Using the scrap material, sew a couple of stitches and determine if you want your stitches larger or smaller. To get the stitches larger, use the stitch length adjuster and turn it clockwise. Turning the adjuster counterclockwise makes the stitches smaller. When the material thickness is increased, stitch length shortens since the length of the stitch is proportional to the thickness of the material. To maintain an even stitch length, you will need to adjust accordingly. For a quarter inch increase in the thickness of the material, turn the adjuster dial one quarter of a turn. Now turn to page 12 in your manual. Let's set the thread tensions. First. Set the bobbin tension whenever you change thread sizes. With the bobbin tension, the machine requires only about one pound of drag on your string. First, loosen the adjustment locking screw on your bobbin shuttle. Then, adjust the tension screw to achieve this pull. Remove the scrap piece of material from the machine and examine it. If the top thread shows through the bottom of your material and the bobbin tension is set, the top tension is too loose. 
Turn the adjuster nut on your primary tensioner clockwise and test again. Continue this process until it is pulled up into the material. If the bobbin thread is showing on the top of your material, turn the adjuster nut on the primary tensioner counterclockwise until it disappears. If you are adjusting the primary tensioner and you notice the wheel on your primary tensioner is not turning when you pull thread through it, you may have to tighten your secondary tensioner nut clockwise one turn. Pull the thread through the primary tensioner and adjust until it turns freely. Continue making adjustments until the stitches are to your satisfaction. Double check to make sure that the adjustment locking screw is snug tight before sewing. Now you are ready to sew your material. Keep all foreign materials away from the machine as it stitches. Select your material. It should be similar in thickness and material to the scrap material you tested earlier. Lift up the presser foot and insert the material. Pull the bobbin and needle threads away from the material and set the presser foot down on the material. Now you're ready to put the boss to work. When making your stitches, make sure you pull the stitching handle all the way down, setting the needle and bobbin shuttle then all the way back up, which pulls the thread in the material tight. Let's start off by locking stitches on our material. This is accomplished by hand sewing back through the same holes. With an automatic machine, we would use the forward and reverse. With the boss, you sew out three stitches, then back up manually to the beginning, one stitch at a time, then sew right through the same holes again. Notice this locks off the material very well. The same procedure is done at the end of your product, giving it a nice start and finish. There are several ways to keep an even stitch along the edge of your material. The first is to scribe or lightly mark a line down the edge of the material. This makes it very easy for you to follow a line with the boss. The second way is to groove the material. This groove is easy to follow and lays your stitch down in the groove. The third way is to use the optional material guide. This assures proper stitch length even when you switch from one piece of material to another. When making corners, there are two methods you can use. The first method is to stitch up to the corner where you want to turn, raise your stitch handle all the way to the top, squeeze the presser foot slightly, and turn your material to the angle you want to sew. Line up your next stitch hole, lower the presser foot, and continue sewing. The second method is to sew up to the corner where you want to make a turn, Bring your needle up approximately one half inch, squeeze the presser foot lightly and turn the material. Lower the presser foot back down on the material and continue sewing. Your Tipman boss should always be kept clean of lint and dust buildup to ensure proper operation. Periodically check the external and internal components of the machine to remove any buildup. After cleaning the lint or dust buildup, use a quality sewing machine oil and place a drop or two of oil at the wear points, such as the top and bottom of the rack assembly and where any of the shafts enter the casing, the pivot boot of the thread take-up arm, down beside the presser foot cable, the needle bar, and where the bobbin shuttle contacts the cylinder bed. Warning! This Tipman Boss Hand Stitcher Sewing Machine is surrendered by Tipman Industrial Products Incorporated with the understanding that the purchaser assumes all liability resulting from unsafe operation. 
Tipman Industrial Products Incorporated shall not be liable for personal injury resulting from the use of this machine under any circumstances. Common sense includes reading, reviewing, and understanding these instructions before operating or setting up this machine, including but not limited to before changing needles, before threading needles, before changing bobbin, before disassembly of the machine, and before moving the machine. Do not attempt to operate this machine until it is securely fastened to a sturdy work surface. Do not operate this machine when parts have been removed, as damage to the machine and or injury to operator may result. Keep hands clear of the presser foot and needle at all times. That about wraps it up with the operation and maintenance of your new Tipman Boss. Refer to your manual for any troubleshooting tips. The Tipman Boss is designed to give you many years of service. If you experience a problem with the Boss, please don't hesitate to call us. Thanks for purchasing the Tipman Boss.